Hello everyone, Hyper here, and welcome to our first guide for Nihilotha The Waking City, where we cover Mythic Rathion. This guide will be broken into separate sections, so if you want to just watch the section that's relevant to you, you can find those in the timestamps below the video. And also this tier, all of our video guides will be available in a text format over on Wowhead. So if you prefer to read your guides instead of listening to them, you can also check that out and the link can be found in the description box of this video. I'm once again joined by my usual co-hosts, Lozi, who will be mostly talking about tanking, and Shampi, who is here to help out with the healing sections. Without further ado, let's get started with the guide. First, I want to mention the mythic mechanic. Creeping Madness is a debuff that is applied to your entire raid whenever the fight starts, and it lasts 2.3 minutes, which means that right as you're about to transition into phase 2, the debuff will time out. While you have this debuff, if you move around, you will gain a stacking slow, which can stack up to 50, at which point you start taking an insane amount of damage and you will quickly die. The stacks of the debuff can be reset by abilities that remove snares, such as Vengeful Retreat, Shapeshift, Post Haste, uh, and many other abilities, as well as external movement freeing cooldowns such as Hand of Freedom and Tiger's Lust. This debuff simply limits the amount you can move around during the fight, however, since so many abilities reset the slow, it is fairly easy to deal with. The slow itself only affects your character for 45 seconds, and there are parts during this fight, especially in phase 1 while you're hitting the boss, where if you're not targeted by the mechanic, the slow might even just time out on its own without having to use any abilities. It is also worth noting that if a player dies in phase 1 with the Creeping Madness debuff on them, the debuff will disappear and whenever they're battle rest, it does not get reapplied, so you can move around unrestricted. For phase 2, the mythic change is that Crackling Shards, which are ran over by players with the Burning Madness debuff, also need to be DPS down, unlike on Heroic, where they just instantly die as soon as the player runs over them. So this means that there is somewhat of a damage check in phase 2 because you need to limit the amount of shards that are still alive at the end of that phase. You can technically clear the debuff on all 30 of the shards that spawn because the 3 players who are running the Burning Madness debuff will each have 10 stacks and there's a total of 30 shards. However, some of them might be in a really bad position to be DPS down, so focus on just damaging down the big clumps of shards and then once those are done, you can start killing the outliers. But it is normal to transition back into phase 1 with having a few shards alive, and that is what adds more difficulty to this fight. In general, you should just assign your highest mobility players to pick up the scales of Rathion, which give you the Burning Madness buff. This is because on Mythic difficulty, whenever a player actually clears the debuff from a shard, making it targetable and DPSable, they don't actually take damage like they do on Heroic. So on Mythic, speed is key, while on Heroic you might actually just need players who are tanky and able to survive that damage. The overall strategy doesn't really change much from Heroic, and positioning is fairly simple. Your raid should simply set up based on which direction the boss is facing, with your melee DPS at the side of Rathion and then the ranged DPS uh, loosely stacked behind them. And this is of course to make dealing with the incineration debuffs a little bit easier, because if you're perfectly stacked the entire phase, then you will need to run a further distance uh, each time you are targeted by the debuff. The second component to this phase is of course finding the safe zones during Burning Cataclysm. And again, this is fairly simple to do. Simply follow the glimmer of the boss whenever he teleports away. You're able to kind of follow where he's going and the safe zone is always predictably on the opposite wall from where the boss is going. Now on that wall it can be on either corner or in the middle of the wall, but at least you have an idea of which direction you should be running towards. The rate composition for this boss is fairly standard and you don't really need to class stack at all, you simply bring 2 tanks and 4 to 5 healers depending on how comfortable you are with the amount of damage you're taking. Um, the only thing that you should try to kind of fit in in the raid if you can is to have at least 3 or 4 classes that can remove slows from other players. And of course these classes are monks and paladins, but even if you don't have that, this fight isn't all that difficult. 
However, having access to those hands of freedom and uh, Tiger's Lust can make it easier on certain classes who are not able to clear their own debuff. This encounter is mostly a single target damage check uh, because you want to kill the boss before having to do a third intermission. Each intermission phase will put a higher and higher amount of stress on your healers since it's almost impossible this early on to kill all of the shards in those intermission phases so you always move on to the next phase one with more and more stacks that are just going to be adding a lot of stress to your healers and a lot of extra damage taken to your raid. The way this fight is set up, two minute cooldowns will be generally used on the boss while three minute cooldowns will be used in the intermission phases to help you with clearing the shards. The first phase two or intermission happens roughly at three minutes while the second one happens at roughly six minutes. So at six minutes you have a decision to make because both three minute and two minute cooldown classes will overlap here and will be able to use their cooldowns. This choice is generally made on the amount of health the boss has left. You could technically have all your DPS pop their cooldowns in this phase, but if that means that you will need to deal with an additional intermission phase, it's not worth it. It's better to get a few extra stacks from having leftover shards and skip a whole intermission phase later on in the fight by having either your 3 minute classes or 2 minute classes delay their cooldowns until that last phase 1. So now we'll talk about healing this fight. First of all, in terms of healer comp, you're going to want to bring around 4 healers. If you feel comfortable, you could potentially drop a healer, but there isn't a significant enough damage requirement to necessitate underhealing. Additionally, for at least the first few weeks of this tier, it's unlikely that you'll be able to skip this second intermission, so may as well bring four. It's worthwhile to note that the mythic mechanic on this fight can be removed by Tiger's Lust and Blessing of Freedom. So while there isn't a strict need for Holy Pallies and Mistweavers, they do have relevant utility on this fight that makes it easier. So if you have them, bring them. In terms of the damage pattern on this fight, the main two mechanics are Incineration and Rising Heat. Uh, Rathion will apply the Incineration debuff to three players, and upon expiration of that debuff, the raid will take damage based on how close those players were to the rest of the raid. They will occur at roughly the time shown on screen right now. The other main mechanic that concerns damage taken on this fight is Rising Heat. So for every pillar that doesn't get killed during the intermission, you'll get one stack of Rising Heat. And one stack of Rising Heat deals 2,000 damage per second to each player. AKA, your entire raid will be taking 40,000 raid damage per second per stack. So if you mismanage your intermission and accrue too many stacks, this is going to cause your raid to take way too much damage to heal and you'll just rot out. This isn't necessarily a mechanic that healers can prevent, but healers do need to be aware of the potential rot damage that you will be taking, be aware of your stacks, and re respond to that damage. So beyond these two mechanics, the only other relevant, unavoidable damage that your raid's going to take is from Burning Cataclysm, where Rathion turns into his shadowy form and flies around the room, as well as when he casts Gale Blast. Your raid's going to take a little bit of damage, but it's not significant enough to assign a healing cooldown. So in terms of assigning healing cooldowns, I would recommend prioritizing cooldowns for incineration debuffs. And if you have multiple intermissions, you'll want to continue to assign large cooldowns, like Devo Aura or Shout around incineration debuffs. But by the time you do the second intermission, you'll be taking so much damage from the Rising Heat debuff that you'll probably just want to chain throughput cooldowns while you burn the boss down for that last 30 or so percent. Tanking Rathion mostly relies on you having good positioning. The boss should be turned 90 degrees towards one side quickly on pull. Since you want to move as little as possible in this fight due to the mythic mechanic, you and your co-tank should set up roughly 10 yards apart and in front of Rathion such that the boss will never tail swipe the raid and his breath will only hit one of you at a time. Tank swap each two breaths that the boss does. Make sure you have something a little extra for each second hit as that hit will be over 700k. The boss does six breaths each time before turning into smoke. So one tank will take two sets, and the other will only take one. After Rathion turns to smoke and you've successfully dodged Scorching Blisters, both tanks should meet Rathion somewhere near the halfway point. Once you're there, get back in your 10-yard spread. Just keep the boss facing the same way, and yell at anyone that's in danger of getting breathed on behind you. During Phase 2, your primary objective 
should be keeping ads from stunning your raiders. Once you've found them, group them up and tank them on top of a clump of unlocked pillars. Thank you so much for watching this video and if it helped you out, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, it means a lot. And a huge shout out to Lozi and Shampi for helping me out with this and if you guys want to watch us stream our progress raids, you can check the description box below where I have all of the social media and Twitch channels linked for all three of us. Again, thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.